me to go back to what my father had taught me, and I felt and I felt that I did. I owed it to my children. I owed it to, to the to my community, not only my children but the other children in the school. Somebody has to step forward and take the responsibility to you know to step out there and do 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 your part. You know. And I think that's something that's required of all of us. You know, that's 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 building community, and that's always been important to me. So, there's a lot of people that may watch this video who may never have felt done something like that. So, what does it feel like when you come home tired, dusty, hungry, at the end of a day of doing something for the school? Not, maybe maybe your kid didn't even go on the field trip, right? Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, whatever. But you've given your all for a full, long day. You showed up early at the school, and you get home. What do you think and what do you feel inside yourself? I think we have to look at our inner selves. And to me, it was just the self-satisfaction of knowing that I did my part. Uh, I have always had this, and you know, some of these things I just have to put in my own way. I've always had this thing about wanting to be able as a man to get up in the morning and look myself in the mirror and look at myself and say, you did your part. But it's, it's the satisfaction. Even though you're tired, you're dusty and everything, it's that inner self-satisfaction of knowing that you did your part. Not only did you do your part, but as an example, working in a school, you run into children that if you didn't do these things, they would never get the chance to do them. Unlike your own children who would have, you would take them anyway. Some right. other families don't see it that way. Right. So, you know, or, or just, the, you know, the families just can't, there may be a situation where they just can't. Parents, we were lucky enough that my wife was able to stay home when, when my children were younger. There's a lot of parents out there, especially within the military area, where father's in the military or mother's in the military, but the other parent has to work. So they can't be there. So basically, you become, they, you take their part. You, you, you see to it that their children get to do it. And it's the... And you you see in, in doing these things, it's that it's that thing of having a parent who can't do it because of a multitude of reasons come up and tell you how much they appreciate what you've done to see that their child was able to to take part in a program that without without that they would never have had. So besides working at the schools and projects to help your kids and other kids. What, what other kinds of service projects have you been involved in over the years? Of course, I volunteered through, through my church. Uh, what kind of things do you do uh, through that? I, I have been, uh, you know, of course, within the churches themselves. I've been on the finance committee. I've been on the, the, uh, the, the church committee. Uh, I've helped put together and do church, pro, you know, uh, church picnics and, and and I you know and just things that uh, that gave me a chance just to get out and work with the people within the church but I have also even while I was in the military have gone out whatever community that we were stationed in I've gone out and worked in the community I I was a baseball coach uh, we worked with, uh, we volunteered at the, uh, my wife and I volunteered at the recreation center as chaperones. We escorted children from the recreation centers and stuff out to programs. I helped with, I helped with summer camps, working, working during the, 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 the time that I was off of my military duty. We would go out and we would work with uh, the, uh, with the, the summer camps and things, in whatever capacity they needed. Uh, I uh, I worked with the Boy Scouts. I worked with the Cub Scouts. What did you do for the Scouts? Uh, basically, I just uh, my uh, my son was a Cub Scout, and uh, I uh, 
I just I helped with the camp outs and, and took the took in the, again being able to uh, to have a, with a chauffeur's license. The military would allow me to take the military buses and take them off base and transport the the, the Cub Scouts and the Scouts to different camps and and things around the area. Uh, the Boy Scouts. Uh, my son never did go into the Boy Scouts, but. Uh, I just, with the Boy Scouts, I just basically helped in any capacity that I could. I, you know, I transported them out to, to places. I, I helped, just helped run camps and things of that nature. I heard a man describe two functions in a church of volunteerism as pillars and posts. Have you ever heard of that? Yes, I have. Would you describe yourself more as a pillar or a post? Probably a post, you know. It's, uh, Why do you think that that, that's what my impression of what you described. Right. Why do you think that's true for you? Why do you think you're a post and not a pillar? I've always been the per type of person that I w have always gone in and helped out in any capacity that I could. Uh, and it's, it's even like what I do today. Uh, I work very hard through Catholic War Veterans, but I kind of, I've always been the person that wanted to be back there pushing everybody else up. I didn't necessarily want to be the, the full support. The, the, in the limelight. In the limelight. I've just always worked very hard behind the scenes. And I, and I have always put everything I've had into that, but I just never really, I, I didn't care about being in the limelight or, or getting the accolades. I just was concerned with my own self-satisfaction. You're now very involved in veterans' causes. Is there anything besides veterans' causes and the ones you've already spoken about that you think is important to mention right now? Well, you know, even, well, other than my veterans' causes... Yeah, we're going to talk about that okay, in a moment. I still, uh, I now, of course, I'm now in, at the point where I have grandchildren. Um, I, I go out and still help with, with uh, programs and stuff for my... Uh, for my grandchildren, I have, uh, you know, my daughter has to work because she is a single mom. So there's a lot of times when uh, my grandchildren, when their classes need escorts and stuff, I step in and take my daughter's place and, and do those things. I, uh, of course, I still work very hard through, uh, I'm right now involved in the fundraising committee to try to build a new church. And uh, so even other than my veterans' causes, there are still things on the, on the outside that I still get involved in other than those issues. Even though I have to say that probably right now about 75% of my effort does in fact go into veterans' causes. I'm going to go back to the pillar and post thing for a moment. The reason that I mention that is because the man that I that taught... Being Jewish, we don't have such a thing. Right. We don't use those terms to describe. We have the same people in our congregations, right. but we don't describe it that way. Um, and he said that he had always been a post. Right. But now he, his reverend came to him and told him that he saw him more as a p pillar. And it seemed that the difference that he was the distinction the way he understood it my understanding of his understanding is that the pillar isn't so much someone who needs to be in the limelight but rather someone who's whose service is more spiritual based rather than finances and building funds and book drives and type of thing okay, okay. that was his understanding that it's more about someone who's deeply in touch with his own relationship with his creator. Right. Okay? And whereas a post might be just committed to making sure the lights are on. Right. Okay? Um, so, um, 
do you not feel some kind of a connection like I just described as a pillar? Do you not feel that connection in that way that motivates you to those types of service? Do you just feel that the just keeping the lights on is something that fits within y your personality? No, I probably feel that way within the areas that I am involved in now on veteran, you know, far as helping veterans. I am totally dedicated to it in every way. I live it, I breathe it, I sleep it. I believe in it with all my heart. Tell me why. Why is it so important to you? Because being a veteran myself. And of active conflict. Of, of active conflict. Combat. Combat. I spent three years in Vietnam. Uh, I've been there. I know what it's like. I know especially what these kids today are living. It's not, it, it's not pretty, it's not nice. It's, you know, um, war has in this, in our society has been played in the movies as being something glorious. There is nothing glorious about it. It is, it, it's, it's living a pure existence and basically in hell. You, when you, when you get into situations like that, there's no black and white. Everything basically just becomes gray. Your existence, you exist in that moment. You exist in that, at that time right there. There is no outside world. You have to put everything else out of your mind because that is the only way that you can survive it. It's the only way you can stand it and come out of it with some kind of sanity. And because of that, coming out of the military, um, then especially the last 12 to 15 years, I met my good friend, Jim McCauley. Jim and I are as close as any two friends can be. We are probably more like brothers than we are friends. And Jim and I are, are alike in, in a lot of ways. In fact, just as a sidelight, Jim introduced me to his sister. And Jim's wife and I and my wife were all together when they introduced me to Jim's sister. And Jim's wife looked up and, and told Jim's sister, says, oh, don't you know? Bob and Jim are married. They can't get through the day without talking to each other. And the sister laughed and said, is that why they look so much alike? Because we are, we are alike in every way. And working with Jim and I, and I think that it's, you know, let me see if I can put this in a way that, uh, uh, when these people come back from actually living in an existence of, of, a, of, of a combat situation, a lot of them come back with a lot of problems and PTSD and all kinds of other mental problems. Seems nearly universal at this point. Right. I think the difference in why you have some that have it and some that don't, you take the, these kids and you put them in the military and you send them off to combat and you bring them back and you stick them back in mainstream America or you know mainstream of life where Jim and I and a lot of our friends we were all career military so when we came back from combat we came back and we were all there still together we were able to work through those situations amongst ourselves and therefore we were able to walk away from it in a lot of ways it, where we didn't have the problems where the kid just comes back and boom he's back in civilian life which was the same thing that happened with vietnam vets the guys who came home they got out and and in an angel island in the bay area and they just got on a bus and went home, went home. they right. they yeah.